Okay, for problem number one, we want to know how many terms does this expression have in it? Isaac? Six. So we've got six um, terms inside of this expression. So if we take a look, remember our terms are separated by plus and minus signs. So we have our first term, which is the 4x. The minus 6y, that's going to be our second term. Okay, our third term is going to be the plus 2. So I'm going to put little things right here. Our fourth term is that negative 5x. Our fifth term is going to be the plus 10. And our sixth term is going to be that minus y. So there's our six different terms. And we'll even write them out here. So we have 4x. We have negative 6y, we have a positive 2, we have negative 5x, we have 10, we have negative y. Okay, so there's our six different terms. All right, for problem number two, I want to know what is the constant? What is the constant going to be? Vincent? Huh? 2 and 10. 2 and 10 are going to be my constants. Okay, so remember... Excuse me. Your constant is just the number. <coughs> Ew. It's just a plain number. So we have a positive 2. We also have a positive 10 that are going to be our constants. So 2 and 10. Okay, our coefficients. We want to know what our coefficients are going to be. I'm going to go ahead and highlight those in our pink. Although I think I just used the wrong colors. I think it's supposed to be pink and green on the other side. Oh, well. Um, so what are our coefficients? Uh, Mackenzie? There's more than one. Yeah, what, well, no, what are the coefficients? What are the values? So we've got a four. What else do we have? So we have, no, don't say the variables. So we have four, right? That's one of them. That positive four. What's this one? Try it again. Negative six. Don't forget the negative. Okay, so we have four, we have negative six, we have, what else? Negative five, negative five is the coefficient. Remember, x is a variable, and then what else? Negative one. Okay, so we have a negative one. There's a one here. There is a one that's written there, so we have a negative one as well. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at problem number four. List all of our possible like terms. So there's actually three sets of like terms. I want one set of like terms first. Io? Negative six and negative one. No. Negative six y and negative one. Okay, negative six y and negative one y. That's one set of like terms. So we have negative six y and we have a negative one y. Negative six y and negative y. Okay, that's one set. What's another set that we have? Nippon? Okay, a 4x and a negative 5x. That's another set. 4x and negative 5x. Okay, and then what's another set of like terms that we also have? Corbin? The 10 and the 2, right? The 10 and the 2 are also going to be our like terms. Okay? All right, let's take a look at problem 5 then. We're going to simplify the expression by combining our like terms. Now remember, when we combine our like terms, we have to put our answer in alphabetical order. So if I know these are like terms, these are like terms, and these are like terms, which ones am I going to focus on first? The y? the x or the constants? Y, x, or constants, Isaiah? The x, okay, so Isaiah, if we combine our x's together, so if we do 4x minus 5x, what is that gonna give us? Negative x, very good. If you, you could have written negative 1x, but remember at the very, very end, we don't really write that in one, it's invisible math. Okay, so we've got that one down. What's uh, the next set that we have to focus on then? 
what are we going to focus on now? We've focused on our X's. What's the next set to focus on? Somebody who hasn't answered yet. All right, Carol? The Y's. Okay, so we're going to focus on our negative 6Y and our negative Y, or putting a negative 1. And what is that going to give us? Carol? Try it again. Negative 6 minus the 1. negative 7y. Okay, so we have negative 7y. Okay, and then our last ones that we're going to focus on are obviously the constants. I'll go ahead and do that one. So we have our 2 and our 10 that are going to focus together. So we're going to do 2 plus the 10, which is going to come out to our 12. So our final answer here is going to be negative x minus 7y plus 12. That's our final answer negative set, or x minus 7y plus 12, okay? All right, so what we're going to do for today is we're going to talk about distributive property. So when you guys have your assignment, that's going to load at 4 o'clock tonight. So when school ends at 4 o'clock, your digital day assignment will load into Google Classroom so that you can start it early if you want. I am a firm believer in letting you get as much done early so that you can maybe have a little bit of time for fun tomorrow, okay? Um, <clears throat> so our digital assignment is going to cover everything that we've gone through, parts of the expression, the terms, the constants, the coefficients, like terms, combining like terms, and then also our distributive property is going to be in there as well. Just going to be a quizzes. It's an unlimited amount of tries for the quizzes that you'll get to do. Uh, so you can do it as many times as you want or as little as you want. It's up to you. But whatever grade is there by the time school starts Monday is the grade that goes in the grade book, okay? No exceptions. All right. So for distributive property, the way the distributive property works is you are taking a value that is on outside of parentheses and you are distributing it by utilizing multiplication. So distributive property, we're going to use multiplication. So we are going to multiply the value that's on the outside to each of the values that's on the inside. Now we happen to have two values that are on the inside. We happen to have one term that we're labeling A, and then the second term that we're labeling a positive B. Notice that I'm highlighting the operation that is in front of the B because that operation tells me if it's positive or negative. Sometimes it might say minus B, which means you would have a negative there. So when we distribute that, what we're doing is we are taking M and we are multiplying it with the value of A, and then we are taking our M, we know that this is going to be a plus because of the fact that it's going to give us a positive answer. We're taking our M and multiplying it with our value of B. Now, if our answer came out to a minus sign or a negative sign, we would put that as a, a negative, okay? So let's take a look at problem number one. Again, we are distributing what we see on the outside to what we see on the inside. Okay, so I happen to have my first term, which is a 3x, and my second term, which is a positive 7. My first term is a 3x, my second term is a positive 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 2 and I'm going to multiply it with 3x. And I'm going to take my 2 and I'm going to multiply it with my positive 7. So what is 2 times 3x? What's 2 times 3? 6. So what's 2 times 3x? 6x. What's 2 times 7? 14. Is it positive or negative? Positive. It's a positive 14. So we're going to put a plus 14. And there's our final answer. Yes? Like if it was X or Y or whatever? Mm -mm. It doesn't matter. You still multiply it the same way. Now, you eventually next semester, like next year, you'll get into where you're multiplying a variable by a variable. 
So if I say, hey, I'm doing x times x, that would be x squared. Um, if I do 4x times 3y, that would be 12xy. So you're talking about um, different variables that can get multiplied together, but you don't know what they are, so you leave them in terms of x and y. You only focus on multiplying your coefficients. Okay? Good question. All right. In fact, you're going to get some extra pride points for that. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. So problem number two, we have 9 minus 4 times the quantity of 2x minus 3. So again, we're going to have distributive property, but I need to know what am I distributing. Am I distributing the 9 or the minus 4? Which one is going to get multiplied to the stuff on the inside, the 9 or the minus 4? Which one do you guys think? Okay, so I'm saying the 9. Raise your hand if you think it's the 9. Okay, raise your hand if you think it's the minus 4. Okay, what makes you think it's the 9? Who says 9? What made you think 9? Okay, he thinks that it's going to get distributed because it's a positive number. Who said the minus 4? The negative 4 is going to distribute. Nippon, why do you think that? Because it's directly outside of it? Yeah, so that's a good concept, or that's a good thought. The negative 4 is the value that is directly outside of those parentheses. The 9 is kind of just off to the side. So think of it like this. This is a classroom inside the parentheses. Okay? Inside the parentheses, that represents my classroom. That's all the students that are inside the class. Okay? I am directly connected to my class, aren't I? So everything that I want to do, I am directly connected to my class. So I want to distribute some papers to the students inside my classroom, so I'm directly connected to my classroom. This 9 is just a random student in the hallway. Is that random student in the hallway going to be part of my distribution? If I have to distribute papers, is that random student in the hallway going to get my papers? No. No. Okay, because they're not part of my classroom. Okay, so this 9, though it is a part of the problem, it is a part of the problem. It is not a part of the distributive property. Distributive property, you have a factor that's directly connected to your parentheses. Girls, I'm going to be switching your seats later, okay? Just letting you know. So we are going to distribute the negative 4, not a positive 4. Please keep in mind that if I covered that 9 and left that minus sign there, that minus sign now acts like it's a negative sign. So this is a negative 4 that we are going to go ahead and distribute to the 2x and to the minus 3. So we're going to do negative 4 times 2x. So I'm going to highlight that or underline the 2x in my purple. We're also going to do a negative 4 times this negative 3. We're doing a negative 4 times a negative 3. We are including that operation in there. And then the 9 is just going to take existence on the outside of it. Okay? So we have this 9 still existing. It's still a part of the problem. It's just not part of the distributive property. Okay, so we have negative 4 times 2x. And we have negative 4 times negative 3. Okay, so the 9 does not get changed at all right now. It still stays a 9. What is negative 4 times 2x going to become? So negative 4 times 2x. Mackenzie? Negative 8x. Okay, what is negative 4 times negative 3? Jaden? 12. 12. Positive 12. So I'm going to put a plus 12. It becomes a positive 12, so we'll put a plus 12. All right. So now, are we as simplified as we can get? Are we done? Nope. Why not? Io? Because we still have the 9. What else? So that 9, yeah, that 9's still in the problem, but can it be simplified with anything? What? With the 12. It can get combined together with the 12. We can still combine our constants. We have this 9 and this plus 12 that still get combined together. And 9 plus 12 is going to give us a positive 21. 
I can't simplify that negative 8x, so it's just going to stay a negative 8x in the front of it. And there's our final answer. Okay, when you got that copied down, go ahead and flip it on over to the back. We're going to do two more together, and then you'll do two on your, or four on your own. <coughs> Anybody still need this? No? Nope? Okay. All right, so let's take a look. We're going to go ahead and work on problem number three. So again, distributive property means that it has a factor that is directly connected as multiplication to your parentheses. So yes, we have an 8x that is close to the parentheses, but it has an operation in between it, doesn't it? We've got the parentheses, and then we've got a plus sign for 8x. So that's not going to be multiplication. What is multiplication is that negative 3 that happens to be in the front. So we're going to take this negative 3, and we're going to multiply it to the 5x. Io, calm down. Okay, that's okay. You're fine. We're going to multiply the negative 3 to the 5x. We're also going to multiply the negative 3 to this positive 6y. Okay, so we're going to do negative 3 times 5x and negative 3 times 6y. And the only thing that's not going to get our multiplication is this plus 8x. So it just stays plus 8x. Okay, so now negative 3 times 5x. Again, you're just focusing on doing negative 3 times 5, and then you put the x at the end. What's negative 3 times 5x? Negative 15. Negative 15. x. Don't forget your variable. You have to include that variable. Okay. Negative 3 times 6y. What's negative 3 times 6y, Jaden? Negative 18y. Negative 18y. Good. And then, of course, we have that plus 8x that's just going to come down as normal. Okay, so we've done our distributive property. Is my expression simplified? Is it as simplified as it can get? No. We still have like terms that can get combined together. Who can tell me the set of like terms we can combine? Madison? Not just 15x, but negative 15x. Good. We can combine our negative 15x and our positive 8x. Those can get combined together. So negative 15x plus the 8x, that's going to come out to negative 7x. And then we still have this minus 18y. And there's our final answer. We cannot combine the x's and y's together. Yesterday I had a group of you who kept coming up and trying to combine your x's and y's together. Think of it like, would you ever combine Skittles with Brussels sprouts? No. No, because they're disgusting, right? You wouldn't want to do that. Okay, you would not want to put your Skittles with your Brussels sprouts and make that the new flavor. That would be gross. They're not alike. So same thing here. These are not like terms. Don't combine them together. Okay, one's Skittles, one's Brussels sprouts. Don't combine them. All right. We're going to... So for problem number four, again, it's just the distributive property. It has a fraction, but it's no different. A fraction is the same concept as your whole numbers, your same concept as your negatives. You don't have to worry about it. It's still going to follow the distributive property where you multiply it to each of the, the parts. So we're multiplying 3 fourths to that positive 16x, and then we're multiplying the 3 fourths to that negative 8y. Okay, do not drop your variables. You need to make sure you keep your variables. So you're doing 3 fourths times the 16x, so really, you're just focusing on multiplying 3 fourths times 16, and then you attach your x at the end of it. When you do 3 fourths times 16, you're going to get 12x. Then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do 3 fourths times 
our negative 8y. So 3 fourths times negative 8, and then you attach the y at the end of it. So 3 fourths times negative 8 is going to come out to a negative 6, and then you attach the y at the end. Again, you cannot combine any like terms here because x's and y's are not the same. So you have that as your final answer. I.O. Thank you. Okay, you guys are doing problems 5 through 8 on your own, and then we're going to check it in just a couple minutes. So taking a look here for problem number 5, you should have gotten negative 18x minus the 3. We would distribute the negative 3 to the 6x, which would give us a negative 18x. Then we would do negative 3 times the 5, that would come out to negative 15. That 12 comes straight down from the problem, um, and then we can start doing combining of like terms. So our like terms in this case are the 12 and the negative 15, and 12 minus 15 is negative 3. So we get negative 18x minus 3. For problem number 6, you should have gotten 18a minus 16b. Or if you, you know, what you have to do first is you're going to bring down your negative 6a because it's on the outside. Then you're going to multiply your positive 8 to 3a and a positive 8 times negative 2b. So that would give you negative 6a plus 24a minus 16b. You can combine the like terms of your a's to get a positive 18a. So you have positive 18a minus 16b. Okay, then we've got problem number 7. Problem number 7, you're distributing the negative 5 times the 2y, which gives you negative 10y, and negative 5 times negative 11, which comes out to a positive 55. That plus 3y is going to come right on the outside. Then we can combine our like terms. Negative 10y and the positive 3y can get combined together to give you negative 7y plus the 55. And then at the very end, we have 0 0.8 that's going to get multiplied to 1.2x and 0 0.8 times the 6.4, that comes out to 0 0.96x plus 5.12, okay? Now, loaded into Google Classroom, you are going to have an IXL skill that practices this, and then if you have time, I'll also load in who still needs to complete assignments for this week.